Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, literacy as a social practice and the reason I want to do this uh, one is because uh, the words themselves don't seem to convey what uh, that term actually means. It suggests that I'm talking about uh, the grouping strategies, getting people to read with others, uh, and that's part of it, uh, but it's only part of it. The idea that literacy is a social practice uh, means that the things we do, uh, the context or situation in which we use the printed text uh, is set up by society or culture uh, and that we do it for social purposes and reasons. So uh, we started talking about literacy this way in the field uh, back around 1980 when uh, Sylvia Scribner and Michael Cole uh, wrote a, uh, a groundbreaking book called Psychology of Literacy where they went to study uh, the Vi language in Liberia, Africa, which they knew was an emerging new alphabet. It's actually a syllabary, not a perfect uh, alphabet, but it was a new writing system and so they wanted to see what happens when uh, a country or a group of people try to adopt a new writing system. Uh, does it just take some good promotion and publicity to get it out there for people? Uh, and then they kind of catch on and it, uh, it gets uh, set out through schools and so on. How does it actually take? And what they found was that this new writing system uh, had a really hard time catching on. It was the only writing system for the Vi language, uh, so uh, there was no competing writing system working against it, uh, but there was a vibrant oral culture already that was kind of spreading things around. So what they found was that the uh, acquisition of literacy skills and strategies happened for the people who had a real purpose for using the print. And the one thing that seems to take more than anything else in Liberia was letter writing. Uh, because uh, this is, you know, in, in, in 30, 40 years ago when they were doing this study, uh, we're talking about a time when uh, Liberia was probably, and maybe still is, I don't know, uh, didn't have really good telecommunications so that you didn't have a lot of people talking to each other on the phone. A lot of places in Africa right now are well connected with cell phone towers, so a lot of people uh, communicate that way. But uh, this was a, a revolutionary way for, uh, for families to keep in touch with uh, one with another. And in particular, uh, women tried to keep their families networked by writing letters back and forth to their friends and family in other places using this new syllabary and the advantage to the syllabary was that it was their mother tongue, it was their native tongue, so there wasn't any of the, uh, the overtures of the business language or the political language that was going on, it was just the, the home language that they were able to speak to each other to talk about things they valued on the, on the family level. And so letter writing was actually the thing. Uh, the alphabet, the existence of a writing si system, didn't create literacy on its own. It's not just the skills and strategies and the equipment that makes things happen. It's actually having this thing. And, and I guess that's the question we ask now. Is it a thing? Uh, until they kind of stumbled on letter writing as a, an authentic practice, uh, literacy was not a thing uh, in Vi culture. So what does it take to make it a thing? Uh, in Western culture, European culture, uh, it was a huge deal uh, that Western Protestant religion, starting with Martin Luther, began to push the idea that you gained your salvation by reading the Bible uh, on your own uh, or in your home and in your family on a regular basis and also singing hymns that you would uh, either learn by heart or use a, a hymnal. Uh, to, uh, to get to. So it only took a matter of you know less than a hundred years before there was sort of this undercurrent in Western Protestant society that you were a good person if you could read or write. So in a lot of ways we in the United States take it for granted because so much of our culture has been handed down and inherited from uh, some of these religious traditions and it's very much the same in Quranic tradition uh, and in Jewish tradition that uh, this access to your uh, your salvation is through the text and so there's a lot of morality. You are a good person if you know how to read tied up in that. So uh, that brings a lot of other things along with it. If you have this culture of you are good if you learn to read and write, it kind of pushes it on people a little bit more strongly than it might otherwise. Uh, but what we find uh, nowadays is that uh, is that 
because in school we're not able to tap into that tradition unless we're teaching in a private religious school, uh, we need to really help people develop their purpose for why they want to read and write, and it's real social practices that get people into using print. So again, I have to emphasize that doing this with real people is more powerful than trying to get kids to do it alone. But I'm not just talking about putting kids in groups or pairs or having them do reading buddies or partners or something like that. Those are all things I think are important, but that's not what a literacy social practice is in complete. So let me give a, a few examples. Uh, what if a kid comes in with a stack of game cards, magic cards, uh, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, whatever kids might be playing nowadays. Uh, the social practice in which those cards make the most sense is in the trading and getting the cards that you want or in the playing of the game. Uh, so uh, a lot of schools in the uh, uh, 1990s and the early 2000s made this huge mistake of, uh, of banning those cards uh, instead of figuring out how to harness all of that raw energy that the kids were bringing in for literacy in the school. They just said, no, the kids get into fights when, they, uh, when the trades don't work out well or when somebody breaks the rules in one of their games. So they just banned those games outright instead of inviting them into school and figuring out how to sponsor it and make it work well for them. Um, another uh, piece of authentic text that I bring in uh, to some of my classes is I have a, a number of different death certificates where if you look at them, there's something strange in the death certificate. There's one where the, uh, the cause of death is uh, cyanide poisoning, and there are a few other little details on the death certificate that make you think, wait a minute, what's going on here? So uh, we read to those death certificates with the idea that we're trying to find the mystery here. And people understand that idea of finding a mystery from television, from movies, and so on, and from other books they may have read. They make those intertextual connections, uh, but uh, there are not a lot of reasons for reading death certificates if you're not uh, doing family history research of your own uh, or looking at celebrity death certificates or something like that, which it, it just doesn't take much. But when you're thinking about what the mystery story is, you actually look at the details pretty closely on a death certificate. Um, another piece of authentic text that I bring into classrooms is uh, seed packets, little envelopes with uh, seeds in them. What do you think the social practice is for reading those? Uh, there's a lot of great text on those, some you know, pretty uh, intense and sometimes artistic paragraph writing and persuasive writing that goes into a seed packet. So what's the social setting, right? Uh, if somebody's not actually planting a garden, it, it's not really literacy, is it? Uh, you could, you could fake it, you could play it, or something like that, but uh, seed packets are great, uh, great literacy, great authentic literacy, but they make sense when you're planting a garden. Planting a garden is the social practice that I'm talking about. Um, restaurant menus, what's the social practice? People going out together and ordering food, and there are people in the restaurant taking orders and preparing food, and all of the literacy that's kind of in the middle of those transactions, that's the social practice. So uh, it's great to talk about uh, buddy reading, partner reading, small groups, book clubs, and all of those things, but if you really want to infuse those uh, partnerships and clubs with authentic text and purpose, Think about what the social practice is that you're going to need to introduce. Is it a game? Is it a simulation? Uh, is, it, uh, is it planting a garden? Is it something hands-on? Uh, uh, one of the other things I do frequently is I have people make uh, paper airplanes uh, based on the world record paper airplane holding model and, and all of the reading and writing that goes on with that is tied up in the contest of trying to throw paper airplanes and see how far yours gets. So uh, that's the social practice is, uh, is the what do we do uh, with, uh, with this uh, literacy. Now, we have a number of genres of literacy in our culture that aren't practical, like seed packets or restaurant menus. There's not some sort of outside purpose that literacy serves. So things like comic books, novels, picture books, joke books, uh, all of those things are art for its own sake for us to respond to. And uh, for those, uh, we tend to read uh, read them to other people and with other people for a long time and to discuss those with each other. So it's the same thing as when you're uh, 
in uh, in the car after you've gone to see a movie. You don't just sit there and ride in the car quietly. You talk about what you saw in the movie, and that discussion that goes along with the common viewing makes good sense. With all of that background of reading to other people and reading with other people, uh, we gain sort of a mental capacity to internalize that so that after a lot of exposure to that practice, we become able to read for the self. And it depends on a lot of experience in that social practice before we can do that. So uh, to bring that all around, uh, how does a kid in Liberia learn that letter writing is a thing? It's not just going to emerge from practical knowledge. What's going to happen for that kid is that that kid is going to, uh, to see mom, most likely, reading out loud letters from aunts and friends and cousins from other places, and that's how the kid learns uh, that letter writing is a thing.